It's now 4.30 on WKYT this morning. Some people in southern Kentucky are still without power this morning after the weekend's winter storms. How some folks in Whitley County are now trying to stay warm. After thousands were stranded on Interstate 75 in Rockcastle County, states plan to prevent that traffic nightmare from happening again. And after last year's winter storms, Lexington invested more money into a new snow plan. We'll find out if that plan paid off after this weekend's big weather. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It must be Tuesday, and we're glad you're with us on WKYT as we get a brand new day off and rolling. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. A little bit warmer out there today. It is, and noticeably. Yeah, you know? which yeah. is good news, Micah. Yeah, and you can see all the snow. A lot of snow melted yesterday, so that's some good news for us. Is we'll allow these showers to just fly on in here, and you can see it's pretty widespread, but it's not very heavy rain. I think when you do get a heavy downpour, it's going to be rolling through Georgetown at this very moment. Sadieville, you'll get in on the mix as well. Heads up, Cynthiana, another 15 minutes or so, and you'll get this moderate downpour rolling on through in Paris as well. So there are some showers outside. Look at these temperatures. Like Rebecca and Bill were talking about, I mean, we're talking mid 40s outside this morning. However, that's going to change by the afternoon. We actually drop our temperatures through the day. 36 is your afternoon temperature. We've already hit our high. We'll get into that discussion in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you in just a bit, and thank you. And much of Kentucky roads are improving. The snow is melting, and this is happening days after a major winter storm hit our state. But in southern Kentucky, where both freezing rain and heavy snow fell, some people are still without power. It was a tough combo, and a couple in Whitley County tell us that they have not had power at their home since Friday morning. They talked to WKYT's Garrett Weimer about how they're staying warm. It's quiet in here. The only sound comes from the clock. There you go, Dad. Or maybe the candle. Everything else has stopped since Friday morning, except for time. About 9.30 is when the electric all went off and it didn't come back on. Since then, Dorothy and Playus Bryant have spent a lot of time in their living room near their heating stove. They closed all the bedroom doors so they don't lose what heat they have, and they waited. I couldn't understand it. And my husband couldn't understand it either, so they just wasn't much we could do other than just sit and wait. Well, about everything in here, it's pretty well right. My chicken and whatever all else she's got in here. After four days, they say nearly all their food has spoiled, leaving them with little to eat over the weekend. <laughs> we had some peanut butter crackers and... Uh, a little bit of cereal milk, that's it. We didn't have anything else. They say their daughter was able to come help after their road was cleared, but there's still a lot they're waiting on. I try to have a positive attitude, but it's getting to me. As the sun set, they got ready again to sleep on the couch. It was too cold, too dark for anything else. In Whitley County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Now, Dorothy Bryant says she has still not been given a firm timeline of when the power could be restored. She hopes to see the electric company clear out brush and limbs near the power lines to help avoid problems like those that have happened after this storm in the future. Well, this morning, owners of marinas on Lake Cumberland say the winter storm caused millions of dollars in damage to their businesses. Roofs and docks collapsed under the weight of heavy snow and ice. Officer Don took this video from Sky First yesterday afternoon. It shows the damage at Grider Hill Marina in Clinton County. And over in Pulaski, the owner of Lee's Ford Marina estimates that the storm caused at least $4 million in damage there. Multiple docks collapsed. The owner says about 250 covered slips are now damaged. The worst loss uh, in this marina's history. I mean, just have never seen anything like it. Well, he says all the boats that were uncovered on slips were not damaged. Crews tried to remove as much snow as possible yesterday from the covered slips that were not damaged. In neighboring Wayne County, heavy snow caused the roofs of a couple of businesses to collapse there. But both Reed's Automotive and McCutcheon Antiques have extensive damage. Reed's owner says he lost five cars and all of the equipment inside the business. No, I didn't think it would ever happen, you know. I've been through several things, but not this. 
He also says he does not have business insurance right now because he's using the money to cover his wife's health needs. Wayne County leaders also say the snow damaged several chicken processing and research facilities. Later this week, the state will meet to talk about a traffic nightmare that happened on Interstate 75 during the storm. State police estimate 3,000 people became stranded on I-75 in Rockcastle County Friday night. Many of them were stuck until Saturday morning. Police closed the interstate because of multiple crashes and jackknife tractor trailers. There just wasn't any way to get to uh, the accident uh, with all the traffic that was there on the interstate. Well, the state transportation cabinet tells us the director of the emergency operations center made the decision to divert traffic at 9 Friday night, hours after the first problems were reported. We do not know why he waited that long. An ESC spokesperson told us the director was too busy to talk to us. The emergency operations center plans to meet Thursday to talk about what happened and see if it can be prevented during other winter storms. This was the first major winter storm since Lexington city leaders unveiled a new snow plan. After last winter, the city invested more money in the streets and roads budget and created an option to hire contractors to help clear the roads. So did it pay off over the weekend? Our Monique Blair talked to streets and roads leaders. Based on the amount of snow that falls, the Fayette County Streets and Roads Department has different service levels to how it will respond. Because Friday's snowfall was more than eight inches, the highest level of service went into effect. That's service level three, that's eight inches or more precipitation, and we, we certainly got that. The biggest change compared to last year was that the city allotted more money in its budget to bring in more contractors to help treat and plow the roads. Which got us into the neighborhoods quicker and, and enabled us to uh, uh, actually execute our plan uh, uh, faster. Add to that, crews were able to respond to requests for help or service in different formats this year. Lex Call came in and staffed uh, 24 hours around the clock for the first time. Uh, we had a social media presence this year that we've not had before. The snow plan is designed once the snow stops to be complete within 24 hours, but crews worked quicker than that deadline. And I think we actually beat that time wise when you think that the snow actually didn't stop until uh, uh, around 5 30 a.m. Saturday morning. Now, Rob Allen told me because there were several duplicate service requests, he hopes in the future there can be a feature added called automatic mapping. He says this is when the public can see where and when the trucks are plowing their streets. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. And Lexington streets and roads crews are still working around the clock. They're now focusing on side streets and neighborhoods. A lot of snow to clear out, Rebecca. Yeah, you know? big, big job, right? <laughs> big piles here and there this morning. All right, it is uh, coming up on 438 on WKYT. And people along the East Coast still digging out following the same winter storm that hit us. Washington, D.C. still in a snow emergency after nearly two feet of snow fell. Salt trucks have not been able to make it to some streets around the city. Somebody needed to get up here, like an ambulance or a fire truck, God forbid. Doesn't look like they're getting in here anytime soon. Schools and government offices in Washington, D.C. will stay closed until tomorrow, but nearly all rail and bus service is expected to resume this morning. The storm also brought more than two feet of snow to New York City. And in New Jersey, hundreds of homes and businesses had damage from coastal flooding. Well, firefighters say four people inside a Boyle County home managed to escape when a fire broke out. Firefighters were called up to the home on Highway 68 in Perryville around 7 last night. No one was injured, but firefighters spent hours at the home putting out the fire and uh, handling hot spots. They had some problems with the breaker when they were using some appliances. Uh, the breaker started tripping, they smelled smoke, so they called 911 and started to evacuate the structure. When we got on, got on scene, there was a lot of smoke showing from the attic area. Uh, we went in, made an, an offensive attack on the fire, started knocking fire down. There was a lot of fire in the walls and in the floor, it had extended up to the attic. Firefighters say much of the home was gutted by the fire. Well, WKYT this morning is just getting started on your Tuesday. We're glad you're with us here early in the day. Yeah, very early in the <laughs> day. <Yes. laughs> this time of year may be the best time to sit back, relax, and brew a hot cup of tea. We'll tell you why when we come back. And we have some rain outside. That's pretty much what we're going to be talking about for today. But the next few days, are we going to be seeing temperatures go up or go down? I'll have that in your forecast up next. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris.
We have some rain out in about early this morning. This is going to help out again with trying to melt some of that snow. If you were waking up this morning and you're looking outside, you can actually see pieces of your yard. Just due to the fact temperatures have been in the mid 40s for about 12 to 18 hours now. I mean, it's been a while since we've had temperatures like these, and you know what? We're going to hold on to that throughout the morning. But afternoon, there's going to be a different feel in the air. Here's your front. Obviously, you can see that on the screen with the rain moving on through. Some with more moderate rain if you work your way up towards Cynthiana. Millersburg, you're next in line, already filling some sprinkles outside. That goes for Paris as well. As you work your way up uh, 27 and head off toward Carlisle. Carlisle, you guys have about 15 to 20 minutes. Stanford, Waynesburg, work your way back toward Lancaster and also Bryantsville, off toward Richmond, Berea, and Waco. Mount Vernon getting in on some sprinkles. There's the rain right now. Urban, it's headed your direction here. In about five minutes, you'll get in in some rain. And also, Waynesburg, uh, just another five to 10 minutes. Somerset, you have about 30 minutes before you start to see some of those showers move on through. Temperatures are in the 40s this morning. We're talking 48 degrees right now in Richmond. When I walked in, there were a few 50s up toward the north, but since the rains started, well, yeah, we dropped those temperatures just a bit. But look at that. Harlan, Prestonsburg, we're at 50 degrees down in southeastern Kentucky. But like I was talking about, that is going to be your warmest temperature as we track throughout the rest of the day. We get into your afternoon, 36 degrees there by 4 p.m. So that's your afternoon temperature, your high temperature we've already hit early this morning. Once we get into the afternoon, too, and that cold air sinks on in, we can have a couple of flurries as we go off into the evening and night. Nothing that's going to cause any issues. I don't expect that whatsoever. Just know these temperatures are about to drop. Now, they won't fall far. And what I mean by that is we won't see the single digits, the teens, nothing like that. We're going to see that cold front move through and, and the light rain and some flurries. But milder air will come back in very quickly. So we'll see that take over as we track throughout the next several days and off into your weekend. Your weekend actually looks phenomenal in terms of temperatures. Check this out on your seven day forecast. Showers with us today at 36 degrees by the afternoon. Remember, we've already hit our high. We get in toward a Wednesday and a few flurries flying around. Uh, really, during the morning hours, no big issues out of that, but it would be pretty chilly. And then you start to see those temperatures jump back up. 40 degrees Thursday, 36 on Friday, another small chance, and some flurries or a couple of flakes. And then we hit the weekend. Look at that, 52 degrees on Saturday. Saturday will be a beautiful day, really, really nice day. And then we look towards Sunday off into Monday, and here comes some more rain into the forecast. Notice I'm saying rain and not snow. Temperatures at 55 degrees. When it's all said and done, guys, we may be able to push that up to 60 degrees as we track towards Sunday and Monday. So a nice little warm swing of temperatures will fly into the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I think that's music to a lot of people's ears. Even if, even if you really love winter, after that big snowstorm, you really want to get rid of that snowpack so you can start to heat some things up. And yeah. we're starting to do that. It's looking pretty good. Great that, that was plenty of winter for me. You know, yeah. if, you, if you turn spring like uh, over the next few days, we'll be all right. I, I think all of us <laughs> agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mike. It's uh, 446 on WKYT. It's said to be the most popular drink in the world right behind water. Most people across the South enjoy it on a hot day. Yeah, definitely sweet tea in the yeah, South, yeah, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, we're, we are talking about tea and how good it is for you in today's mom. Every day minute. January is National Hot Tea Month. It's a good time to learn about the health benefits of this ancient beverage. Fitness Magazine says studies suggest that one cup of tea may contain up to five times more antioxidants than any fruit or vegetable. These disease fighting compounds may help prevent certain cancers, keep your heart healthy, burn fat, and ward off weight gain, as well as sharpen your mind and help your body beat the effects of aging and stress. Just one to three cups of tea a day provides plenty of health benefits. And green tea is said to activate the sympathetic nervous system to encourage fat burning. In one study, exercisers blasted more fat during a half hour workout when they consumed tea beforehand. Experiment with the many varieties of tea, from black to white to oolong, each has its own unique benefits and flavor. And whether you use loose tea leaves or tea bags, have it hot or iced, you can still benefit from sipping it. For more great ideas to make mom's life easier, check out MomsEveryDay.com. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com. Click on Moms Every Day. You'll also find updated weather and all the latest news right there on our website. And WKYT This Morning is back in just a moment. Police charged a man they say damaged the Bell County Cemetery by driving his truck through the grounds during the winter storm.
is 450 on your Tuesday morning. Police have charged a man they say damaged a Bell County Cemetery during the winter storm. Middlesboro police say 42 year old Lloyd Knuckles drove his truck through the Lynch Cemetery Friday. In the process, police say he damaged at least three gravestones. The operator of the cemetery says this hits too close to home. My son's up there. I lost him when he was 18. I've got grandparents up there. I've got uncles up there, nieces. Police charge Knuckles with criminal mischief and violating graves. They say he told them that he was at the cemetery to visit family buried there, but he did not know where the graves were. A federal judge has ruled in favor of the owners of the Noah's Ark theme park in a lawsuit over tax breaks. The judge says the Ark Encounter in Grant County should qualify for tourism related tax credits from the state. The state originally offered the tax breaks and withdrew the offer, saying the park planned to discriminate job applicants based on religion. The park then sued, but the judge upheld the park's right to hire people based on their religious beliefs. 451 now on WKYT. And this morning, a man has been forced from his Lexington home because of a fire. That fire started late yesterday afternoon in an apartment off Cambridge Drive in the Cardinal Valley neighborhood. Firefighters say something in the kitchen caught fire and then quickly spread. They kept the fire from spreading to neighboring apartments. Firefighters say one man visiting the apartment at the time was taken to the hospital for minor burns. And they say the man who lives there can't stay in the apartment for now. Mainly the fire damage. I mean, there was a kitchen fire and we had, they were, had to tear some uh, drywall out and uh, like I said, just some exposed wiring, so it's, just, it's not safe. At this point, firefighters are not sure what inside the kitchen caused the fire. A Harrison County man admits he scammed his elderly neighbor out of more than $21,000. The Kentucky Attorney General's office says 25 year old Raymond Wainscott pleaded guilty to theft by deception. He agreed to a five year prison sentence along with paying restitution to the victim. Investigators have not exactly said how the victim was scammed out of so much money. Tonight, Governor Matt Bevin will unveil his two year state spending plan. The governor is already calling for the state to generate more money to fix shortfalls in public retirement systems. But he's told the Associated Press he will not raise taxes to do that. The governor plans to use any excess state revenue for pensions. The teachers' retirement system alone needs an extra $1 billion over the next two years. So that uh, budget message tonight at 7 o'clock. Coming up next, we'll have a look at some of the stories that we're working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your morning forecast to get us. Let's take right now and uh, take a look right now, I should say, at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. Our news team is busy here at 456 this morning. At CNN's Democratic Town Hall in Des Moines last night, voters took center stage. They presented their own questions to the candidates seeking the Democratic presidential nomination. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders both spoke on health care reforms, but Mark O'Malley told voters that old ideologies won't move the, the uh, country forward. The Iowa caucus is scheduled for February 1st. In Oregon, the takeover of a federal wildlife refuge is moving into its fourth week. The Harney County judge has called off community meetings as long as militia members are still there. The judge is worried about firearms at the meeting. The militia group has occupied the refuge since January 2nd to oppose federal land use policies. And also coming up at the 5 o'clock hour, we'll have more about uh, Governor Bevin's uh, proposed budget, which is coming tonight at 7 o'clock. A lot of people eager to find out uh, what his plan is. Snow, uh, all, a lot of it everywhere. A lot of it has also been melting. We've yeah. had warmer weather, and so that's been good. And it's been a little bit warmer. That's been nice. Let's check in with Micah to see what we can expect today. Yeah, and we have the 40s this morning, too. We, we reached that this, uh, this past afternoon, yesterday afternoon, rather, and then we're going to be looking for those temperatures to drop as we go through the day. This is your cold front. Here's the rain along with it, and you'll get some showers as we track through the morning hours. Afternoon, it starts to fade down toward the southeast and off into uh, the state of Virginia and also Tennessee. Now, for us, we're in the 40s this morning, but you'll see this drop about 10 degrees later on this afternoon. So don't prepare for the 40s and 50s as you walk outside today. Prepare for the 30s later on today. I'll show you that in your forecast in another two hours of WKYT News.